especially after this weekend and after the last two weeks, people being starved in the north, people being burned alive in the middle section of the, uh, in Dar al-Bala. You know the whole thing here. So a doctor, a doctor. That, What's the question, Gabriel? Thank you. Uh, the doctor, a doctor we spoke to said uh, that people in Gaza have realized no one is coming to help them and no one is coming to save them. I was a doctor at Al-Aqsa Hospital today. All right, good afternoon. Um, let me start off with a couple of uh, well, updates. First, for, I will start off with Gaza, then with Lebanon. Uh, we are aware of very disturbing reports about an Israeli attack on the grounds of a hospital complex in central Gaza. The Secretary General condemns a large number of civilian casualties in the intensifying Israeli campaign in northern Gaza, including its schools displacing sheltered Palestinian civilians. He strongly urges the parties to the conflict, all parties to the conflict, to comply with international humanitarian law and emphasizes that civilians must be respected and protected at all times. Humanitarian assistance into Gaza is woefully inadequate and is at the low, lowest level in months. The Secretary General underscores that the parties must ensure the safe and secure delivery of humanitarian assistance to those in need at the level at which they need it. There must be safe environment as well for the second phase of the polio vaccination campaign, uh, to be which is to be completed. And I'll have a bit more details on polio in a moment. Um, today, a team from the Office of the Coordination of Humanitarian Af Affairs, alongside with colleagues from the World Health Organization and the UN Mine Action Service and the UN Human Rights Office, vis visited the Al-Aqsa Hospital in Gaza to assess people's needs following last night's attack. The Al-Aqsa Hospital was also meant to be used as one of the uh, polio vaccination sites. Out of the hundreds of displaced families sheltering in the courtyard, some 40 families were affected, half of whom lost their children and other belongings in the fire. Aid organizations are mobilizing the humanitarian response. Among the assistance most urgently needed are tents and tarpaulins, beddings, hygiene kits, clothing, children's supplies, kitchen kits, as well as food. The assessment noted that patients at Aqsa Hospital were referred to nearby medical facilities due to influx of trauma injuries following a strike on UNRWA school in Nusrat. Uh, Steph, in uh, regard to the uh, Israeli attack of Al-Aqsa Hospital, or the tents that were around Al-Aqsa Hospital, it's the seventh time that uh, the perimeter of Al-Aqsa Hospital has been attacked. As the Secretary General probably saw, people were burned alive it seems like this is a little bit more than just simply disturbing. Does the Secretary General have any th more reaction to this? Well, I mean, I, I, I think you, I, I, read, um, I read his reaction at the, at the beginning, which c clearly condemned uh, the attack. Uh, it, it is yet another um, round of, of, of horror um, in this conflict. The Palestinian civilians continue to suffer. The more than 100 hostages continue to be held in tunnels and not see their freedom. Um, and this is why we continue, uh, even at this time, to call for a ceasefire. Thank you. Stefan, I want to go back to Israel's intensification of attacks in northern Gaza. Um, it is reported that due to these attacks, 487 civilians have been killed just in the last 10 days, and it just seems to be getting worse and worse. I mean, we saw an image with someone burning to death while getting an IV transfusion. Surely this should evoke stronger reactions. I mean, do you think is it really sufficient for the Secretary General to just condemn and call on both well, sides? I mean, I mean, does he have a more concrete call to the international community? I think and the, Israel in this I, case. I think the, the, the Secretary General's uh, calls have been clear. He's, he and his team have been continuously pushing for an end uh, to this conflict, for a cessation of hostilities, for a ceasefire, for more humanitarian aid to be uh, going in, for hostages uh, to be released. I think he's been relentless in all of that. Um, I also want to ask about the recent horrific crime by the Israeli occupation where individuals were burned alive in their tents. The Israeli army spokespersons uh, release an admission of, admission of this crime with the excuse always being uh, the, tar the tar targeting of fighters. 
how do you receive such justification for the crime and um, the continuous media distortion by the, the Look, occupation? We, we, we're, we're, we are reacting to the facts on the ground as we see them, as they're told to us, as our colleagues see them. Uh, we're not operating and commenting on anything else. Okay, Steph, just a couple of follow-ups. Uh, Kogat is saying 30 trucks entered through the areas crossing today. Can you confirm that or not? Uh, again, you know, this is uh, trucks that are able to get into areas, into the crossing. Uh, I have no doubt that it is true. The challenge for us, and it continues and it's getting worse, is due to the insecurity, the lack of law in, in order, is to pick up those, uh, those goods. And just to make sure I understood something on Lebanon correctly, there were 1,557 violations across the blue line on ye yesterday, and 1,441 came from the south to the north. Correct, and uh, there was the, hopefully it's the balance, if we did our math right, uh, came the other way. 92% came from the south to the north. You don't have to answer that, but I did the math. So 92% came from Israel. For that violations. particular day. That particular day. And one last follow-up, Steph, if you allow me, please, thanks, is um, many people in Gaza, and I don't speak for them, but we have journalists and humanitarians that are there that do speak to them, are, are growing increasingly... Um, frustrated with the UN and I know the UN is multiple things mm -hmm. but especially after this weekend and after the last two weeks people being starved in the north people being burned alive in the middle section of the uh, in Dar Bala you know the whole thing here so a doctor a doctor that, what's the question Gabriel thank you uh, the doctor a doctor we spoke to said uh, that people in Gaza have realized no one is coming to help them and no one is coming to save them. That was a doctor at Al-Aqsa Hospital today. What, what is your reaction? Well, I mean, I, I can't even begin to understand the frustration and the anger of people who are directly impacted by this conflict. But I can tell you that our humanitarian colleagues on the ground are extremely frustrated at the situation because they know they're not able to do what they need to do to help all the people they need to help. I mean, we, we had a team go to Alexa Hospital today, right? WHO, Mine Action Service, uh, OCHA. We're, we're, but as, as we've said, it, this is, all of this is a, is a drop in the bucket. All of this is humanitarian assistance through opportunity instead of large-scale assistance that we want. So we, I mean, we, we fully understand their frustration, and we're as frustrated as well because in this conflict and in other conflicts, whether it's in Sudan, we know there are so many people who need help. But because this conflict is going on, because fighting is ongoing, we're not able to reach the people that we want to reach. Thank you. Uh, see you tomorrow. We'll let you know about Mr. Lacroix.